Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And in today's video, we're going to talk about one of the types of damage that Battleship New Jersey suffers over her career. She has very little battle damage, but plenty of wear and tear from the environment. In today's video, we're going to be specifically talking about cavitation, what that is, and where we find it on the ship. It's one of the things we're going to be looking for while the ship is in dry dock, because any places where there's water flowing along the ship, you could see cavitation damage, but it's going to be most concentrated on the propellers. Cavitation is uh, gas bubbles that form particularly on the trailing edge of a propeller. Uh, there's, there's other places that it forms too, but, but on a battleship it's particularly the trailing edge of the propeller. And when that bubble pops, it'll actually start to erode away the manganese bronze of the propeller. We're here in Camden at one of these ships 18 foot tall outboard propellers. In fact, based on the curve of this one, I'm pretty sure it was our starboard side propeller. It was removed from the battleship in uh, 1968 when she was reactivated for Vietnam. Bernoulli's principle governs a lot of things that have to do with uh, fluid dynamics over wings, essentially. A uh, propeller is not a wing going through air, but spinning through water, it gets a very similar effect. So Bernoulli's principle states that there is a pressure difference between the leading edge of a wing and the trailing edge of the wing. Namely that there is a lot of pressure on the leading edge and a lot less on the trailing edge. The way the propeller is facing us right now, this black part is where the dunce cap would go over it at the end of the shaft. So we are facing it as if we were at the back of the ship looking forward. We're looking at the trailing edge. The reverse side is the leading edge. We should expect to see the most damage here on the trailing edge because that is where there is low pressure. The propeller forcing water out of the way has a similar effect to boiling it actually. Uh, it's causing the water to compress and when it compresses it's heating up and that's turning it into non-condensable gases. So that gas is forming a little air pocket or a cavity, but that cavity will rupture. And the way it ruptures is what causes the damage. Obviously that, that air bubble is the strongest on the bottom face where it's touching the propeller. That means that it is the weakest on the opposite face. So once the pressure of the water overcomes the pressure, pressure of that gas bubble, it essentially uh, causes a jet of water to dimple in from the top, the weakest side, and shoot all the way through this gas bubble into the manganese bronze propeller. And over time, that is what's wearing away the propeller and causing all of these little micro holes that then get bigger and bigger and bigger over time. That's the main reason why Battleship New Jersey had to change her propellers so many times throughout her career. At our most economical cruising speed, it's not really an issue. But when you send the ship up to full speed, now you're displacing so much water, you've got such a pressure gradient difference between the leading edge and the trailing edge that you start to get the, these massive numbers of bubbles. That's not only a problem because of the damage it's causing to our propeller, that, that is damage over time. It's not like an immediate thing. If we run this for an hour, we're going to have problems. The more immediate concern is that the cavitation, when those air bubbles pop, makes a sound wave that is very audible, especially on sonar, especially for submarines. So while the, the battleship is always going to be very audible for submarines, lighter ships like destroyers and destroyer escorts will probably only be running their sonars at lower speeds when their own cavitation isn't going to be causing a problem for them. If you want to be among the first people to see the cavitation damage on Battleship New Jersey's propellers, the ones that are still on the ship, check the link in the description below where we're selling tickets to tour the ship while she's in dry dock weekends in April and May. You will be able to get this close to the Battleship's propellers. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. It's allowing us to dry dock the ship. You can also support us 
by donating at the link in the description below. Another way to support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about us and the channel. Thanks for watching. When was the last time you walked beneath a nearly 900 foot battleship without getting wet? Or stood next to an Iowa class propeller three times taller than you? This spring, you can book a tour beneath the battleship New Jersey, the largest, most decorated battleship in US history while she's in dry dock at the Philadelphia Naval Shipyard. Tens of thousands of gallons of water will be drained from the dock so you can see the hidden workings of one of our nation's all-time greatest military assets. Battleship New Jersey was first launched on December 7th, 1942. She epitomizes the awe-inspiring display of American naval power and the indomitable American spirit. Don't miss this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to support the work of the Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Visit BattleshipNewJersey.org to book your tour today.